everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review Star Wars Episode 6 Return of the Jedi. So, Return of the Jedi stars Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, and Carrie Fisher. So, Return of the Jedi is about when the Rebels have to go out and fight to destroy the second Death Star, while Luke Skywalker has to try to convince Darth Vader to go into the good side. So, before I do review Return of the Jedi, my guest star, Joe Tufano, is going to review this movie. However, I should warn you guys, that his review is going to be filled with spoilers. So my recommendation is to go watch Return of the Jedi and then come back to this review so you can watch Joe's review and my review. But with all that being said, Joe, take it away. Hey everybody at 22 Tiger Dude's channel, I'm Joe. Thank you Tiger Dude for allowing me to come on your channel and talk about my favorite Star Wars movie of all time. Return of the Jedi. But let me give you guys a little bit of a quick backstory on my history with the Star Wars saga. My dad first showed me the VHS tapes when I was about six or seven years old. It was before the special editions came out in 1997. And I watched those VHS tapes, I don't know how many times, and Return of the Jedi was probably the one that I watched the most. It had the most fun, it was a lot of energy, it was the most lighthearted. I don't know, it, it just did something for me. And I'm sure a lot of it had to do with the Ewoks. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of it had to do with it. But I also like seeing everything wrap up in a nice little bow. It, it feels like the perfect ending to me anyway. Now I'm a pretty big Star Wars fan if you probably can't tell. I got the Kylo Ren Force Awakens shirt. I got the special edition DVD from 2004. I also got a Lego TIE fighter. And take a look at this. I got Poe Dameron's X-Wing fighter. Point made. And I also got this poster or this portrait from Target of Return of the Jedi. Pretty awesome, right? And I also have some of the video games for Star Wars, like Rogue Leader, Bounty Hunter, Rebel Strike, and The Clone Wars. I even have the most recent Battlefront game. I love Star Wars. I mean, who doesn't love Star Wars? I am gonna be talking about some spoilers. I won't talk about everything, but there's gonna be some spoilerific details. So if you haven't seen Return of the Jedi, and if you haven't seen it, where the hell have you been? Go see it. It's awesome. Make sure you watch the right one, though. It's been about a year since The Empire Strikes Back. Luke found out the truth about his dad, about Darth Vader. Han has been frozen in carbonite, and the Rebels are very close to defeating the Empire once and for all. And while the Rebel Alliance is figuring out a plan to destroy the second Death Star that's being built, Luke, Leia, Lando, Chewie, R2, and 3PO go on a mission on their rescue attempt to rescue Han Solo from the clutches of Jabba the Hutt, the vile gangster on Tatooine. All the while, Luke is trying to figure out how to bring his father back to the good side and probably one of the most epic confrontations you've ever seen in a movie between him and Vader with the Emperor taunting him at every turn. There's so many great scenes in here that if I feel like I'm going to talk about every one of them, I'll be here forever. First of all, Luke Skywalker, he's a lot more disciplined, a lot more mature as a character. He's not, I was going to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. I mean, he's still a likable character throughout the entire trilogy, but he's come a long way from being that kid that we first met on Tatooine. His introduction when he walks into Jabba's palace, you will take me to Jabba now. Takuto Jabba now. You serve your master well. I said Dawa Dawa Gao. And you will be rewarded. This is probably the best performance he's given as Luke Skywalker so far. He's got this really strong presence to him as Luke Skywalker. As I said, he's very disciplined, but he also retains his humanity. And he shows concern when he realizes that he has to face against his father and possibly kill him. And he voices to the spirit of Obi-Wan. I can't do it, Ben. I can't kill him. Carrie Fisher as Leia, she's pretty good. Never really been a huge, huge fan of the character of Leia, but I still like her as a character. I'm just not really a huge, huge fan of hers. And you know, I know a lot of people are always talking about the gold bikini. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not really that crazy about it. She's good looking, but I, when I look at her, I just go, all right. And of course, Harrison Ford as Han Solo. He's perfect as that character. I mean, I don't think you could have gotten a better actor to play him. And he's come a long way too, Han Solo as a character. From this cocky smuggler who doesn't really care about anybody else but himself. And to see him be more efficient as a soldier, he's come a long way since The New Hope. I also like seeing how far the, his relationship with Leia has progressed since they first met. Darth Vader is trying to figure out a way to bring Luke to the dark side of the Force, along with his help from his master, the Emperor, who you've heard about in the other two movies. But now you finally get to see the Emperor, and when he arrives on the Death Star, you see him as this old guy who's very wrinkly, and he has his cane. And you just go, what the hell is with this guy? And Ian McDiarmid? I hope I'm saying the guy's name right. He is another standout in this movie, along with Mark Hamill. My god, he is just brilliant in his line delivery. Strike me 
down with all of your hatred, and your journey towards the dark side will be complete. Your hate has made you powerful. Now fulfill your destiny, and take your father's place at my side. It's a great performance. He just is crazy evil, but on a whole different level compared to Darth Vader. And of course, you got guys like Billy D. Williams, who's also really good as Lando. Peter Mayhew as Chewbacca. We all love Chewbacca. 3PO and R2. They're also great. They also have some very good comedic moments. And also some of the action scenes like the Sarlacc Pits sequence, the space battle above Endor, the speeder bike chase. And I love that speeder bike chase, by the way. That's a really awesome scene. But back to the Sarlacc Pit, the part that always makes me get me excited is when Luke jumps back up in the air, does a somersault, and catches his lightsaber, and you find out it's a green one. I can imagine some people in 1983, when they saw that, they just went, ooh, a green one! And... It's been mentioned many times before, but with the lightsaber choreography, he's just swinging away with his lightsaber. It's not a dance-like movement like we saw in the prequels. And it brings me into probably the best part of the whole movie, the final confrontation between Luke and Vader. That is probably my favorite lightsaber fight in the entire Star Wars saga, because you see this really emotional internal battle inside Luke. He wants to bring his father back to the good side. He's also tempted to join the dark side as well. And the whole time he says to him, I won't fight you father, but he has no choice. He has to fight him back. And another great moment, I get chills every time I watch this. Vader is in the shadows and he's looking for Luke and you see Luke's face. Half of his face is in the light and the other side is in the shadows. Completely symbolic, he's conflicted at that moment. And it's where Vader finds out that Luke has a sister, which you find out is Leia. And when he goes, if you will not turn to the dark side, then perhaps she will. Luke snaps. Never! <laughs> he just swings away at him and when he cuts off Vader's hand and he finally defeats Vader, that's when Emperor goes, take your father's place at my side. It's right at that moment where Luke realizes that he's turning into Darth Vader, and he calms himself down by using the methods that Yoda taught him and said, I'll never turn to the dark side. I'm a Jedi, like my father before me. Which leads into my favorite scene in the entire movie. The Emperor is electrocuting Luke with his force lightning, torturing Luke with all of his might, and Vader's just standing there, looking down at Luke. Back to the Emperor, back to Luke. And the reason why I love this scene so much is that even though he's wearing a mask, with the camera work, the score, which by the way, John Williams' score, perfect. It's brilliant. With the camera movement and the score, you can tell that he's conflicted at that moment because that's his son and he's being tortured. And then finally, lifts the Emperor over and throws him down that reactor thing and he kills him. Right there, Vader's redeemed. It's, it speaks for itself. I love that scene. And it leads into another great scene where Luke takes off Vader's mask and you see what he looks like underneath, which some people pointed out a crusty old white man. <laughs> it's a really sad scene because it shows you he's damaged, not just physically, but emotionally. And it shows you that makes a lot of sense that this guy would treat people this way. And when he dies, I kid you not, it makes me cry. And then of course it ends with that famous Yub Nub song, which I love the song Yub Nub. And then Luke sees the spirits of Yoda, Obi-Wan, and the spirit of his father, Anakin Skywalker. The Death Star is destroyed, the Empire is defeated, it's over. All is right with the galaxy, at least until The Force Awakens. And by the way, the Ewoks, personally, I honestly don't mind the Ewoks. I think they're fine. I for one love Return of the Jedi, just like I love every other movie in the original trilogy. And I really cannot wait for Force Awakens to see how that continues the story. But thank you 22 Tiger Dude for inviting me to your channel. I'm really glad I got to talk to you guys about this and back to you. Thank you so much Joe for reviewing Return of the Jedi. In my opinion, Return of the Jedi is a fantastic way to end the original Star Wars trilogy. You really just like being in this world with the characters and it's so cool to see where these characters have been since the Empire Strikes Back. Like Luke has really changed a lot since the Empire Strikes Back. Han Solo has been a character that has grown very well in this trilogy as well. And he would be willing to do anything just to protect Luke Skywalker, Chewbacca, Princess Leia, um, R2-D2, you know, you name it. He's very caring, he's very brave, and I respect Han Solo for that. Not only is he just a very cool character, but he is a very strong character. And I really appreciate how this trilogy developed Han Solo. Princess Leia is still really good here. Carrie Fisher has been consistently very good with Princess Leia 
continuing to prove that she is actually a very strong female character. She's not a damsel in distress. You know, she's willing to help Han Solo whenever he needs help. Like, she's willing to go out there and do the blasting. It's not just Han Solo being the man and doing all the blasting while protecting her. No, when there's times when she needs to protect Han Solo while he's doing something, she will go out there and do it. And I continue to appreciate Princess Leia the character more and more in this original trilogy. Just like with The New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back, I love Chewbacca here, I love R2-D2 here, and I love C-3PO here. They are, once again, very great characters. They have always been very likable characters, in my humble opinion, and it's just always nice to see these characters. Darth Vader, I was really impressed how Darth Vader was portrayed in Return of the Jedi. In A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back, Darth Vader was just showing how powerful and menacing he is as a villain. He is someone you do not want to mess with at all. But in Return of the Jedi, Darth Vader shows that he does have some good in him left, as Luke Skywalker has said. So it's really cool to see Luke Skywalker trying to convince Darth Vader to get into the good side. But that does become very hard when Emperor Palpatine tries to make Luke Skywalker go into the dark side, once again without giving away any spoilers. But my goodness, Emperor Palpatine is one manipulative son of a bitch. He will just do anything in his power to just manipulate you to get into the dark side. He is someone you don't want to mess with either because of the powers that he holds upon him. So Emperor Palpatine was a very interesting character. Ian McDermott is just fantastic as the Emperor. He really resembles the character very well. And you know, just like how he portrayed the character in Revenge of the Sith, he was very over the top, but at the same time, he's just very menacing. And you can't help but hate but somehow really enjoy the character. It has fantastic visual effects. Some people have criticisms that the visual effects don't hold up as well as A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. Personally for me, I feel like the visual effects hold up just as well as A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. I still feel like they blend well with this world. It blends well with the overall atmosphere. Still wide shots like in the first two movies in the original trilogy to just have you just sucked in to the story and the action. I know I repeat myself at this point, but the battle sequences, whether they're blasting or fighting with lightsabers, is just filmed so beautifully. It's honestly very incredible how they're all filmed and it honestly takes my breath away. That's what this original trilogy has been consistent about. Anything with action in general, they have really succeeded. Hell, the Ewoks even fight against the Empire. It may be ridiculous, but it's so funny to me. It's probably the funniest part of Return of the Jedi. Because think about it, the Empire is getting their ass kicked by a bunch of little fluffy teddy bear looking creatures like seriously when you think about it it's stupid but it's so funny and I love that Return of the Jedi actually went for the fun vibe it actually took back the fun vibe of A New Hope because A New Hope was all about just having fun being introduced to the world of Star Wars being introduced to these characters so the first film wanted you to have a lot of fun. Of course, The Empire Strikes Back, it raised the stakes and it had a much more darker tone. Return of the Jedi, it's like when they were looking at The Empire Strikes Back, they're all like, okay, we already went dark enough with The Empire Strikes Back. We already did what we need to do for that film. Let's go back to the fun tone that everyone loved in A New Hope. Return of the Jedi, in terms of the pacing, it's perfect. I'm never bored once with Return of the Jedi. And honestly, the same thing goes for A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. There's never a dull moment in those movies. The movies just keep going at a nice fast pace. Like seriously, the first 35 to 40 minutes of this movie all takes place in Jabba the Hutt's 
place. The entire first 35 to 40 minutes of the movie when you're at Jabba the Hutt's place, it's really cool. And it was really cool to see Jabba the Hutt for the first time, considering he was mentioned in A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back. Like, they would mention him in the first two films, and we actually see the character for the first time. Jabba the Hutt, he is slimy, he is dirty, he really doesn't give a shit. He's just a very powerful boss of Tatooine, and man, he is just so ugly to look at. All the creatures surrounding that area were very ugly. but. I have to give props to the character designs of them for how ugly they are. The puppetry to Jabba the Hutt and everyone there was really impressive. It's amazing how puppetry can bring characters to life. And then Lando continues to be a very likable character in Return of the Jedi. He was really likable in The Empire Strikes Back and it was really cool for what he was doing here in Return of the Jedi. But by far, my favorite thing about Return of the Jedi are the Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker moments. You could tell how the film was written and directed. They wanted you to feel for the characters. They wanted you to feel for Luke Skywalker and you feel all the emotion he is expressing as he's having that lightsaber fight with Darth Vader. But then there's even a scene where Darth Vader is very conflicted. Just how that whole scene was handled, honestly, was a big surprise to me. Now, personally, my only problems with Return of the Jedi is that I do feel like the Ewoks can be pretty distracting at times, particularly when we really get introduced to them. When they're in the battle sequences, I actually really like the Ewoks because I thought they were actually pretty useful. Yes, it may be ridiculous, but personally, in my opinion, I thought they were actually useful. Before that, however, I didn't really see the point in the Ewoks. I thought their introduction was pretty weak. I didn't hate the Ewoks personally. They're way better than that freak Jar Jar Binks. Whew. But yeah, they can get distracting from time to time. Some of the green screen in Return of the Jedi, it can get pretty obvious. I don't think I can notice a green screen error in A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back when I look back at them. So I find it weird how both of them don't have really distracting green screen but all of a sudden Return of the Jedi does. It's just in some spots here and there. And then really the last flaw I did have with Return of the Jedi is that there are a couple of scenes where the reactions aren't really the reactions you were expecting. They didn't really feel believable. Just two scenes. Without giving anything away, there's just one scene where Luke tells Leia something and how Leia reacts to the specific thing that Luke tells her. Her reaction didn't feel believable. And then there's another scene towards the end where she tells Han something and then Han doesn't really react to the way he should have, which I also found weird. Overall guys, yes Return of the Jedi does have a few flaws, but I think I did enjoy this movie more than most people. I still think it's a fantastic movie. Like this is how you end a Star Wars original trilogy. And I'm going to personally give this movie three and a half out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what did you think of Return of the Jedi? And now I want to know from you guys, what's your favorite Star Wars movie in the original trilogy? And I would also love to thank my guest star, Joe Tufano, for coming here to review Return of the Jedi. He's a very cool dude, you guys. So if you guys want to check out Joe Tufano's channel, I will leave a link in the description below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!